everybody, it's Nicole from Shape It Up Fitness, and it's back to soccer, so we're getting some videos in the car. Um, oh, sorry, I'm going to hold this still. So, welcome to Shape It Up, and today I have a topic that I was talking to somebody, and um, I do get asked a lot about how to approach your child if they are overweight. So we're going to talk about what to say to a child or a loved one, um, especially kids when you think they're overweight. Before I dive in, I wanted to let you know about a brand new program that I have. It's called Turn Your Life Around in Six, and you can check it out at shapeitupfitness.com. And so let's dive into the topic. This can be kind of a um, touchy subject because when you're a parent, you want nothing more than your child to live a happy life and have no issues and no worries. And life is not like that. Uh, so when people ask me about what should I say to my child when they're overweight? These are some of the do nots that I strongly recommend. Of course, you can do whatever you like, but I strongly recommend that you do not do the following things, especially younger kids um, or like the teens. It depends on which age range you're in. But so one of the things you don't want to do is shame them. And I don't think people do it on purpose and I, I just don't think they realize but especially with kids when you really focus on their weight um, again depending on how old they are especially if they're teenagers they all of a sudden they're going through a lot of changes to begin with they're very insecure it's it's a, an emotional time where their hormones are kicking in and they don't know where they fit in um, you don't want to shame them so one of the things that people tend to do is we will take you to a Weight Watchers meeting and, you know, we'll go out into another county where no one knows you, that kind of thing. That is a red flag because what you're saying to the child is you, there's something wrong with you and you need to hide it. We need to take you somewhere where no one can see you so we can fix this, right? Um, another thing is that you don't want to harp on them when they're eating food especially when they're eating food. Like, don't judge them. Don't go, well, you shouldn't be eating that or you shouldn't be eating this or whatever. Just teach them the basics of nutrition. And if you need help, let me know. Teach them the basic of nutrition so they have an understanding of what are the better options for food. Because if you followed me at any length of time, you have heard me say no food is off limits. It really comes down to how much food you're intaking and how many calories you are burning. Um, if you're just joining us, we are talking about what to tell children if you if you think they're overweight. So these are the do nots. You don't want to do these. Um, a lot of times parents will ask them, what did you eat? And of course, the kid's not going to tell you what they're going to eat. If you have a teenager, <laughs> you understand that for from like 13 to who knows when, probably 20, they're going to lie to you. They're not going to, and I don't think they do it on purpose. It's just, they don't want to disappoint the parents. They don't want to disappoint you. So of course they're going to tell you what you want to hear. So if you're asking them, you know, say they went out to eat and you come, they come back and you're like, what did you eat? First of all, you're grilling them. They're putting them on the spot and that makes them uncomfortable. And again, it's, it's kind of just kind of gnawing at the problem and saying to them, look, there's something wrong with you or there, there's an issue. Um, so make sure when they do go out, I would just stick, well, I'm going to give you some do's at the end, but so these are the don'ts, but do not harp on them. Do not kind of nitpick at what they ate, um, because they're going to lie to you and not tell you the truth. Um, do not weigh your child. They do not need to be on a scale. Half of Sorry, there's a fly in here. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. <laughs> um, I, I don't... I, yes, I use a scale when I weigh my clients. Um, I'm using it for data. I don't have an emotional connection to the scale with my client. If you have an emotional co connection to the scale, you don't need a scale. You need to ditch that scale. Do not weigh your child. Again, it's, it's very... Um, it's not good to weigh your child if you feel like they have a weight problem. So get rid of the scale. Again, I'm going to go over at the end more things that you can do in a positive way to kind of help them. 
Um, last of the do nots, do not put your child on a diet. That is the worst thing that you can do for your child. A diet, in all sense of the words, is very restrictive. Um, no kid is going to want to go to a birthday party and not have cupcakes and not have cake. They're going to, you know, a lot of times parents are upset because their kids are, they're afraid they're going to be made fun of if they're overweight. Well, if they're not eating the cupcakes, they're going to get picked on either way. So do not, do not put your child on a diet. So here are some of the things that you want to think about if you feel that your child is overweight. Number one, you have to make sure that this is an actual fact. Is your child overweight? Now, if you are just a parent and you're looking at your child, there are many frames, many body types, many different sizes. That's what makes us all unique and different. So you may think your child is overweight, but I would say medically speaking, that is when it's a fact that your child is overweight. And if you go to the doctor, I'll have to do a whole other video on um, BMI because I don't like BMI. BMI, I have a blog post on it, um, but BMI was basically based on your height and your weight. Has no account for muscle mass, has no account for bone structure. A doctor didn't even design BMI. It was a scientist. So I don't equate BMI as a valid tool to find out if your child is overweight or not, or you. So skip the BMI. But medically speaking, so if your child is pre-diabetic or, or has diabetes, um, type 2, that kind of thing, that I would say, yes, your child is overweight. That is a fact. We can prove that in court. That is it. Um, so once you figure out, okay, so medically speaking, maybe my child is overweight, then what I want you to do as a parent is to get a piece of paper out don't show anybody, but get a piece of paper out, take five minutes, and I want you to write on this paper your thoughts about why you, why your child is overweight. Not so much why, but like when you think about your child being overweight, what are the thoughts that come up in your mind? Um, you know, some of the thoughts may be they will get picked on. They may not have friends. Um, they may eventually, you know, have big time diabetes or some other illness or get sick as they get older. Um, they may never get married. They may never have kids. They may never enjoy life to the fullest extent. So write down all those things on the piece of paper. And then I want you to just keep writing, just free write. Sorry, this fly. Um, just keep writing until you really have exhausted your mind. So if you find you're only writing five things, keep writing because there's a lot more thoughts running in your head about your thoughts about your child being overweight. Um, so then once you are done, I want you to look at the paper and go, okay, which of these statements are actually true? Which are these like factual statements? So like if you, for the example, I said, you know, they're going to get picked on and they have no friends. Are all overweight people constantly being picked on and have no friends? No, there's plenty of people that are thin and skinny and still get picked on. I just think kids would just pick on kids. It's part of, you know, the growing process. Um, the other thing is, you know, are they never going to get married? You don't, you can't predict the future. There are many overweight people very happy and in love and married and have kids and, you know, they have a wonderful life. Same thing with skinny people. There's many people you can pick whatever, you know, frame size you have. There are thin people that are happy. There are thin people that are miserable. There are heavy people that are happy and there are heavy people that are miserable. Um, so you can't determine the future of your child because you think that they're overweight right now. Um, the other thing too is, um, I actually know some people who are classified as overweight and they're very healthy, classified in the sense of like body fat, um, girth measurements, that kind of thing. But medically speaking, they have a clean bill of health. So there are different variances, of course, you know, how much overweight and everything. But, you know, medically speaking, they're fine. So you can't determine your child's future or predict what is going to happen to them. So then once you're done that, what I call brain dump, Get another piece of paper out and 
I want you to write down on the paper what your thoughts about you are. So what do you think about your weight? What, um, and again, keep writing, 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 writing as much as you can. And then when you're done, look at those statements and see which ones are true. This, if you hear me talk, um, if you've been following me, I've been diving into more psychology, like cognitive behavioral psychology. And it's really fascinating at how many thoughts we have in our mind that are serving us. They're good thoughts, but then we have so many other thoughts are called limiting beliefs. And we think that they're true because we've just been saying them over and over and over and over in our brain for our whole entire life, but they're not true and they don't serve you. They don't improve your life. So those are the thoughts that we want to ditch. I want to ditch this fly. (laughs) Um, But a lot of times, if you look at that list, you are actually projecting your thoughts about yourself onto your child. So a lot of times, and it depends on the person. So if there's an overweight mom and a child is overweight, they may be projecting their thoughts about them and their fears onto their child. The same could be said if the mom is really skinny and maybe her methods of being skinny were not, you know, the healthiest. They may have different sets of values that they feel like their child should be thin or they're not a worthy person. Everyone is worthy the day you were born. So it doesn't matter what you weigh. Um, so a lot of times, like I said, a lot of, um, there's a lot of what's called mirroring or projecting yourself onto your child. So just take a look at that list and see what comes up to you. And there may be some ugly things on that list. That's just totally fine. Make that list without judgment. Just look at it, kind of observe it and, and see what happens. So here are some suggestions for what you can do. The top of the list I suggest is you tell them that you love them every day because I have a teenager. Actually, I have two pretty, my daughter is 12, um, 12 and a half, and my son is 14. And it's not like, like I try to tell them every day that I love them and, you know, kind of, you have to make it an unconditional love. Whether they're skinny, fat, smart, not so smart, you know, the choices that they make, you, you, just there, just love them. Okay. Um, especially in that teenage year, you know, hopefully what I'm doing for my kids, (laughs) I'll be able to report back to you in five years or six years and be like, yes, it worked. It was all good. Um, I have very well behaved children. So, so far so good. I can't take all the credit. My husband helps out too, but, um, so another thing is watch what you say And more importantly, watch what you do around your children. Keep in mind that the things you do that you don't think your children are seeing, they see. So if you're getting up in the middle of the night and having a snack in the refrigerator, they know. If you are binging in private, they know. If you are purging and using diuretics, those kids just know. You can hide everything and anything. They will find a way. I don't know how. (laughs) It's their sixth sense. Um, You know the old saying, you can tell them whatever you want, but, you know, actions speak so much louder than words. So the other thing, too, is when you're talking to them, really be aware of the things that you're saying to them. Um, You know, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, like, you never want to shame them. You never want to... Um, kind of nitpick at what they're eating or anything like that. Um, The other suggestion I have is make eating very healthy. You can involve them in cooking. Um, Like with my kids, we don't really make traditional dinners, which I have mentioned before. Um, But they see me cooking healthy foods. They see me eating things like, it's not like I eat chicken and broccoli all day long. Like today I made French toast, which I'm regretting because I seriously think I have a wheat issue. (laughs) So, but, um, they watch me have French toast. So it's not like, you know, I have cookies every now and then I try to keep it as healthy as possible, but I do eat things that are quote unquote, not what you would expect a trainer to eat. Um, but making things healthy for them. I try to teach my kids how to read nutritional labels, but not too crazy. Like I, you know, focus, let's, how much sugar is in that 
whatever they're drinking. I don't say you can't drink that. I tell them, look, just, you know, 40 grams of sugar is pretty much what you should be at per day. How much is in that glass? Now they can choose whether they finish it or not. And I'm hoping that as they get older, that will still sink in. Like my daughter drinks a lot of fruit juice. Um, I don't buy it for her. I'll leave that (laughs) alone. But she knows that that's a decent amount of sugar. And I hear her now as she's getting older saying, you know, oh, that was a lot of sugar. It's not in a negative way. It's just like, it's like saying, oh, I wore two different color socks today. So it's not a big deal. Um, The other thing is try to make exercise fun. So whatever your kid is involved in, um, my son loves to play video games. So I even joke with him a lot. I'm like, when you take a break, you run up and down the steps or something like that. Um, if they like going to trampoline parks or they like going to the park, get involved with them. If you're a parent that sits on the sidelines and watches your kid play, get in there and, and be active with them. And even if you are overweight or, you know, maybe you have medical conditions or arthritis or something, just even trying to get involved with them will also help you. So, and kids really look up to parents, whether you realize it or not, you know, they are emulating what you are doing and even in in behind closed doors. (laughs) So keep that in mind. Um, I know with my mom growing up, um, I loved to dance. So was a professional ballet dancer, but we used to turn on old music and just dance in the middle of our living room. Um, Make it fun for them. You could do sports, whatever, um, always invite them with you. So it doesn't even have to be, you know, over the top things. If you want to go for a walk in the park, just invite them. They may say no, you know, if they're old enough to be by themselves or what have you, but just keep inviting them. And sometimes they'll go with you and sometimes they won't. Don't judge. Just that's, you know, if you ask them 10 times and on the 10th time they decide to go with you, that's awesome. And if you have a good time talking and connecting with them, they may be more likely to go. Um, So pushing the issue is the worst thing you can do on a kid that you think is overweight. The other thing is tell them that you're there for them, no matter what the situation. I have constantly tried to drill into my children's heads that you can always come and talk to me. I don't care what the situation is. Um, And hopefully they'll do that. Uh, Time will tell. Um, So here are some takeaways. Your children will figure this out. You can be there for them. You can offer help in a positive way. Um, A lot of times when you throw them into situations with doctors and you got to make sure you get the right information, but you know, the kids in front of a doctor, they freeze up. They, they, they don't, that's not what they want to deal with. You know, it's kind of like shines a flashlight on the problem. Like there's something wrong with you. And that's probably one of the worst things a kid can feel, right? Um, So I think one of the hardest things to do as a parent is to let your kids live their lives. I'm not saying don't parent them, and I'm not saying they don't need discipline or anything like that. But as they get older, you it's hard because you feel like, um, like you don't want your kids to go through pain. But here's the thing, you, you kind of have to let them go through some of those tough times. You can absolutely be there for them. But sometimes if, you know, let's say the child is overweight and they're struggling with it, maybe they need to go through this to be something like the best version of they, them later on in life. Or maybe they need to go through this to help somebody else down the line. You don't know. And I think as a parent, we go to worst case scenario, like, you know, death, doom, and gloom. And unless it's actually happening at that time, you can't predict the future. So be there for them. Love them. If you need help with any nutritional suggestions, please send questions my way. I'll be happy to help you. Also, all these videos that I'm doing... um, You know, I talk a lot about nutrition, so you can use these as free resources as well. This fly is driving me up, sorry. Drive me crazy. Um, So I like to give the example of the Alex Lemonade um, charity. So if Alex hadn't gone through what they had gone through, this that lemonade stand and that charity would not 
be what it is today. And as sad as that is, and I'm sure that's heartbreaking, but to know that that is going on and living on in her memory is, is huge. So my best suggestion is do not put a spotlight on them. Give them nutritional information that is valid and solid. Be the example. And then just kind of let them live their lives. They'll figure it out. So I see some people that are watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the comment section. Um, I'll wait a second if you do. And if you if you type them in later and I happen to cut off, uh, cut off just I'll answer them also as well. So this one was a little bit longer. Um, as you can tell, I hope I'm very passionate about my children, other people's children. And, you know, because it really starts... It starts at their age level, and if, as a parent, you know, your parents, whatever knowledge they had about it, you know, they transferred it onto you. So it's just a cycle, and it keeps repeating, and you can change it um, if it's not serving you or your children. It just takes time and, and making sure you have the correct information. Do not put your child on a diet. All right, so I don't see any questions coming through. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and uh, if you are interested in the Turn Your Life Around program, go ahead to shapeitupfitness.com and you can check it out. All right, have a wonderful evening and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.